So to grade or not to grade, that is the question. So in today's Fight Chat Friday, we're taking a little break from the sparring and we're going to look at what it is that we're going to do within our clubs around the whole topic of grading, assessment and progression. And if that's something that you've considered, if it's something you've decided you're definitely not going to do, or if you've decided it's something you want to do, but you don't know how you're going to tackle it, maybe today's episode is the one for you. So, Richie, today is a little bit different from our regular Fight Chat Fridays. And, uh, you know... Yes, Fight Chat Friday without the fight. Yeah. Well, um, maybe maybe the fight is a different uh, scenario this time. It's something else that we might have to tackle. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes with that one. But, uh, oh, I have a little bit of audio to sort out here. So, if you want to introduce the topic here, that would be really, really handy. Yeah, definitely. So, welcome, guys. Um, today's topic is really going to be focused on discussing the idea of gradings and not having grading so for us at the minute and um, myself and Adrian in particular we're coming up with some solutions to tackle this problem because for us some of our students have now not graded for almost two years which is a long time for people not to be engaged in training not to be engaged in having a goal and that's kind of one of the things that we will really discuss today the importance of having a goal for your training for sure and something that drives you and, and almost like a bigger why um, so I think that we're, we, it'll be interesting to see um, people's thoughts on this. Some people are against it. Some people are all for it. Some people are trying to move with the times. And it's not its not really like a revolutionary thing. It's more of an evolutionary. It's kind of like you just you, you have to roll with it. There's It's come a time now where it's it, you can't just wait. Things are going to pass you by at this stage. So it's time to kind of move with it. Um, and it's very interesting to see on our poll here, the agent just popped up. We threw this on Instagram today that, Almost 70% of people are in favor of this, but there's still almost that one third of people who, who disagree with the, the whole premise of having yeah. gradings at the current moment. And I get that. I really, really do, because we have we have kind of this on a two uh, like on two fronts, because we've got our color belt gradings that we as examiners will will look to. And then we have the black belt gradings, which uh, for us in Ireland require the, the national examiners panel and uh, a national black belt test. And there hasn't been a national black belt test since December of 2019. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a while. So like I have black tags who are black tags for two years now. Um, yeah. and you know, they, they don't have a foreseeable future. Like the next potential grading is probably June. Uh, you know, so two and a half years at black tag is a good stretch, but equally I have, you know, yellow tags and yellow belts who are 12 and 18 months since they've done a test. And the, the big thing that's like, that stands out for me and has pushed my mindset on this quite a bit is they've been training, they've been making progress. Yep. They have, you know, improved in areas of their Taekwondo. And because of that, we're now challenged as instructors to find a way to give a meaningful assessment of that and give uh, you know, a, a reward or, you know, to, to help them, you know, benchmark what they've achieved and, you know, mm -hmm. go from there to set new goals. And for me, that's kind of what the grading is always about. It's about like drawing a line under something that's been worked, uh, worked towards for a particular point in time. You grade it. Is it exceptional? Is it OK? Is it not quite there? Or, you know, do we need to spend more time there and then reframe, take that opportunity to set new goals? Uh, to set a new plan and work forward. And I mean, I think that's yeah. really what That's one of the most important now. things about the grading, isn't it? Like, that's yeah. what you're looking for. You're looking for something to push your students forward, for them to have a, a set standard or a goal to aim towards to, to achieve. And of course, there's mm -hmm. no, there is no perfect standard, but it's that's the whole idea of martial arts and the whole idea of training behind this kind of a concept is that you're you're almost chasing perfection that doesn't exist and that that's that's what drives you forward it always has you something to aim towards and it's very very important it, it, like people who are young in particular they're not going to want to train unless they have a particular um area to focus on and something a, a goal to achieve you know they, they're not going to just train for the sake of it especially these days when you have young kids they have the the likes of the the dopamine fuel activities as we call them with the with the playstation the xbox ipads at, at their hands to check out anything they want on youtube you know it, and you need to be able to have something to keep people engaged especially um the younger students and and for myself and adrian 
our um our clubs are mostly young people so it's yeah. a predominantly um a young population that we're dealing with here and it's mostly kids but you just said something very interesting there the whole idea of people who maybe be yellow belts training 18 months but what if you've taken in white belts just before um, the lockdown and these guys have been involved and they haven't trained or graded in a really long time and so there, there yeah. is a certain population you need to be able to juggle there and, and balance with them yeah and i have a group of people who we took in during that window in september when we were able to get back and train for a little while and they've only done one month of training in person and at that in a far more restricted way than we were ever used to before so most mm. of the training they've done since then has been online um they're uh you know they're in a, they're in a position where most of their training has been you know definitively online training so there are elements of their taekwondo that they've just like if you compare them to a year ago two years ago of what a white belt would be doing they haven't done most of yeah. the same things so was, it's a little bit different and i was even thinking about that um as i was thinking about this the other day it was like there's a potential of okay i don't start sparring with my guys until they're yellow belts but there's now the potential of some people who have just got to that yellow belt stage haven't really experienced it and now because of the way things are they're progressing towards green tag um, and pushing forward some green tags pushing towards green belt and there is the possibility of these uh guys never really experiencing sparring or some of the other facets of taekwondo um at a level which we would like them to be at this stage but we, that doesn't mean that we, we can just hold people back and wait for things to continue. I think that it's, the, it's gone past that stage now and the whole idea of waiting to see what happened is, isn't in play anymore. I mean, we've we've been waiting since March of 2020 and here we are in February now. So just to give people some context as well, for us right now in Ireland, we're on level five lockdown as um, since since Christmas really, isn't it? Well, we, we had a very brief dip out of it, but we had uh, six weeks from the second half of October through to the end of November. And then we mm -hmm. had a very brief dip back to kind of a very restricted level three lockdown, uh, which made almost no difference to us whatsoever. Um, and then right back into level five over Christmas and have been there since. So mm, we are yeah. pretty much only allowed out of, out of your house to do essential shopping, essential work, exercise within 5K, etc. And basically that's kept us on Zoom. Mm. Uh, but like you got to think of it this way then as well as of last year in 2020 we've probably only got maybe 20 to 30 percent of training which we could have had in a regular year yeah so you know what i mean and then supplementing that with zoom and things you got to reward those students who are training and putting in the effort you can't just wait for them to to come back to regular you know and just hope that they're going to stay with you you have to keep them active have to keep them engaged have to keep their skills progressing forward yeah. maybe that's pushing one kind of focus as opposed to what we would regularly do which mm. which is the case as well you know so maybe it'd be interesting to see in the comments here we've got some people watching live and um, what what it's like in your particular country in terms of lockdown are you guys able to train right now are you doing gradings and um, so let us know in the comments it'll be very interesting to see yeah so maybe we just jump back to the very very beginning of the the concept of the grading and like what under normal circumstances will a grading do for us and that will kind of help to kind of get across the logic of well what is it that then we're going to try to do for our students over the next month or so so uh yeah if we start with that like for me the grading as we've already said is about it's setting small shorter term goals or mid-term goals really for the most part uh until you get to the higher grades um the uh the concept is you know it, it you could train indefinitely but if you don't have mm -hmm. something in the immediate future that you're actually trying to set a standard for aim for build towards you're not as productive as you could be it's all about giving you something to focus on to uh to, to really uh have your energies your your training efforts all towards particular goals and by doing that repeatedly over time, we learn a process. And the process is that one of self-improvement of, I check where I am now, I set a goal for where I want to be, and I set a timeline and I, I plan how I'm going to get there. And then the timeline shortens and we get to the end of that and we evaluate our success against what we've done. And like for me, that is the essence of what we want to do now with our students to try and assess them, grade them, test them, and, and bring them forwards. Mm -hmm, absolutely and you know what i think we are extremely lucky in comparison to other martial arts because there's friends of mine who are training in other 
um, combat sports and things like that. And they're not able to do anything. We're very lucky to have multiple facets in Taekwondo. And it's yeah. something that we've mentioned before that we, we kind of coined a, a jack of all trades kind of a, a post in the past on our social media trying to cover so many of the martial art is very very difficult um, yeah. and but then when it comes around now it's ver we're very very fortunate to have that and um, so we can really maybe step back from the sparring side of things and the, the live kind of training and we can really focus on the technical aspect on the flexibility on the kicking development and all the, them other areas which will really develop and push your foundation up as we can come back to regular training Oh, definitely. So uh, I suppose the, the, the quick part, and you can see some questions coming in uh, or some mm. comments coming in. So from Brendan there, uh, Mr. Jerry Mooney is one of our instructors in Ireland. Uh, he's based up around Dublin. Uh, so he conducted an, on, an online grading, very progressive thinking. And believe me, we're getting to that right now. That is kind of mm. the, the premise. That's what we want to get here. And, and a number of instructors have. And even way back in the first lockdown, some people ran gradings back in April, May, June of last year. Um, particularly abroad, not so much in Ireland, but particularly yeah. abroad, there was there was gradings run. And w at the time, because, and for me, it, like specifically, I saw this as being more of a short-term thing. I did not foresee, I have no, like, uh, Nostradamus hat of foresight on. I did not see myself sitting here in 2021 still talking about COVID in this sense. So for me, it was like, no, we'll do it in the summer. We'll do it a little bit later. And very luckily, I did get to do a grading in September. So I, for some people who trained it throughout July and August and who did the online training up until then, we got a grading done. But that wasn't the majority of the club and all of the new people who started from September didn't do one. So we have them to think think about. Um, and again, from uh, Galina Orlova, uh, even when we're out of lockdown, we won't be able to spar straight away. It'll be potentially pods of one. And that's absolutely the way we mm -hmm. see it as well, I think. Um, so well, we are very lucky as well in, in, in Ireland to have... Um, great work going on with, with yourself, Adrian, and some other people involved in the Irish Taekwondo Association and, and the Commission. Um, and they're doing great work behind the scenes to set certain guidelines and almost kind of um, what's the what's the term that they're using for that, Adrian? For the uh, each checkbox almost yeah, for each level. Yeah, they, yeah. You, you, you there's, have protocols for each level. Yeah, exactly. So it's very, very important to have that system and have that structure as a foundation behind you to be able to come back with this system. So we're very lucky and fortunate to have that as well. Funnily enough, now, Brendan is uh, queuing us up for the uh, the segue and the transition into the next uh, to or into our topic, really, for today. So uh, it'll be like online academic learning where you have to submit a portfolio of work and in this case video. And you know what? In the end, that's banging the nail in the head for us. And that's exactly... Thanks for that, Brendan. Thanks, Brendan, you got there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we, when we banged our heads together, have decided to do. So um, we looked at other examples where people have done online gradings, you know, and it's trying to replicate how a grading would happen in a traditional sense in a dojang, where you'd have the examiners watching a number of students uh, marking forms, you know, issuing results and going group by group by group. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, Richie was very much the same uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that so one of the things is from teaching all the zoom classes it seemed just how difficult the spaces that people have available to them are uh, the idea that you're going to manipulate the rest of the family out of the way at the appropriate time for everyone to meet in their group and have a, a camera person who can move with them for them to have appropriate space to move for each person's space to be appropriate at each time while we're counting or doing whatever we're doing um, to be able to give actual feedback directly to each one without actually letting them talk on the other end potentially as well it, it just it wasn't something i wanted to to, to try and deal with and uh, and i felt that the chances of getting a positive experience for everyone on the other end was uh limited and so that's where the idea that brendan had there it kind of comes to the fore and we've kind of decided to uh to allow the students to submit a portfolio of work showing how they've progressed and achieved each of the outcomes of the assessment in their own time by way of video submission mostly uh, except for the theory test and uh, and so we've looked at in our case google classroom to help us deliver that so mm. it's been busy and it, it has been busy and that's what i was just going to say that there's a lot of work has to go into this um and there was a lot of uh, potential systems and 
potential approaches that we could have taken. So basically, we, we went to, with this Google Classroom, um, and I've been running this now as of the last week, week and a half with yeah. my own school, and it's going really, really well. Uh, it was a lot of work putting in a beginning to record the videos, to, rec to record all the instructions for each technique, and yeah. um, to list out kind of the technical things you must cover for every single um aspect in the syllabus i guess and um, but it has been fantastic and people are sending back in work and we've got more of our students involved again we we had um not as many people involved in our zoom classes as we yes. usually would in regular classes i know this because there's a almost like um something at the end of the tunnel for students it has got them a, a bit more involved and it got them back on board so i'm really happy with that um, yeah, and it's, it's been, been fantastic good. so um it's good as well that, that with this program that we're using, it allows people to work on things in their own time. Sometimes the Zoom is fantastic and the live interaction is great, but it doesn't suit everybody and it doesn't suit a particular people in, at the same time. So this way it allows you to progress in your own time at your own pace when it suits you. You can record videos and submit them. It's not live where you have to perform in front of other people. And for some people, that can be quite off-putting, particularly online as it's new. Um, so I, th I think it's a good way to go. And so far, it's been uh, received pretty well. Um, mm. So, yeah, it, it's, it's been it's been good. I know Adrian is still working on it as well in the background, producing the videos yeah. to get it up and running as well. Yeah, and it, it's one of the things that, and what we'd like to kind of maybe uh, talk to people about and show people about today, I think, is, yeah, what's involved in it and what it should look like and why maybe we decided to do it this way, what it, you know, how it compares to regular grading, where the strengths and weaknesses are and so on. But maybe if we just have a, a I, I can have a quick look at, mm. um, in a moment here and I'll just uh, get rid of that so we can see it a little bit better and we might have to take off the names there for a second just to have a quick look at it. But, you know, as an example here, um, this is the kind of thing that we're looking at where uh, this is my strike rates, my six to nine year olds, they're all white belts to yellow belts and they're all doing a, a slightly non-linear grading. So it made it uh, so that uh, there's a checklist of all of the different things that people might need to do to get from one grade to the next. Um, we've got uh, a be a coach assignment. So one of the tasks that you have to do is to pick a particular technique, learn all about it and deliver it. People will be chatting to me there, the phone number's up. Um, but there's <laughs> instructional videos on counting, how to bow in, how to tie your belt, how to make a fist correctly. Uh, all of the wall work and strengthening exercises are stretching exercises. Uh, uh, there are theory questions, so uh, uh, as well as instructional ones as well. Uh, and then, you know, when we're getting to it, each event is scored. So there's instructions on how to perform. There's a video on how to perform it. Uh, and then there's instructions about what you're going to submit yourself uh, to, um, uh, you know, in order to gain uh, the, uh, how, how would you call it, the, um, uh, to gain recognition of that grade. Off I mean, to get to a certain standard. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think that's, uh, for us, it, it, it's quite a thing. It was quite a, a, a step change and departure to get to something like that. And one of the things that I think will really help with this is the fact that, like parents, like myself, you're on apps like Class Dojo and Seesaw and Teams and all the rest of it, and you're getting your schoolwork, you know, for the kids through an app they're engaging with it through an app, you're submitting your responses, you're getting some communication over and back and some support from the teacher, and we're moving on that way. And although the mm. skills that we're learning in Taekwondo are not academic in that sense, like we're not learning how to read, write, do math or geography, whatever it happens to be, we are learning practical skills, physical skills. We're giving one, to, or, you know, almost like in your home one-to-one -one tuition in terms of our Zoom classes twice or three times a week, every week. And then we're also giving resources in terms of like a definitive look. This is what we want to see from you. These are the points of performance. This is what a good repetition will look like. We're giving theory support for it. So, you know, looking at uh, can you identify a good repetition from a bad repetition? And then we're we're asking them to show it. So um, maybe just from that point of view, it can show you, uh, you know, what an instructional video might look like. Uh, what uh, a test of it might look like in terms of identifying right from wrong and maybe the kind of feedback that we give. So maybe we can talk through those as we go. So I, mm -hmm. I will put the sound on for this one. The next kick we're going to look at is side piercing kick. 
We're going to do it from a parallel stance. We're going to kick hip high. Okay, let's have a look at a few of them so you can kind of feel what we're talking about. So this kick is like a stamping motion to the side. How we prepare it is we're going to lift the kicking knee this way. As we do that, the other foot is going to pivot on the ball of the foot so the toes point away. This brings my knee into a good position to let me stamp out to the side. I want to be making the blade of the foot prominent when I do that. That means the very edge of your foot, okay, and you can even stand on the edges of your feet and practice, the edge of your foot should be what hits the target. So I lift and pivot, I extend, bring it back and down. And it helps if I keep my hands high. Lifting, extending, bringing it back and down. On the other side, lifting, extending, bringing it back and down. We're gonna be looking for really strong efforts on this one. So, so as a basic idea, I suppose that's the kind of instructional video that we would look at. It's the, you know, we have to choose the language a little bit to, you know, the level that you're working with. And if that one's aimed at white belts, uh, who are age nine through 12 or whatever, that might be the language you choose. If I have a different video for the younger kids with a different language, you know, it, it's, it's down to resources. But the idea mm -hmm. is that having watched that, they can then go away and practice. They could, you know, give you some, uh, send some feedback in, or they could send in a video for some feedback. And Richie, if you want to talk through this kind of uh, feedback process, uh, I'll run that video. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm using a very simple bit of software called Coach's Eye, and it's been fantastic to be able to give my students visuals. So you can kind of comment on Google Classroom and it's very good. But here, for example, we're working on low block rising block and I'm just telling one of my students maybe not to lean the body forward so much to keep the body a little bit upright in between the two techniques. And then here we're discussing the, the, the chamber position. So instead of coming from the center of the body, we're coming a little bit more from the opposite side. So the opposite chest line to get that low block to travel a little bit further. And it's just a visual to really help with the students. And then that video will be sent back in that um, uh, with individual feedback. And there was a lot of time goes into this and it takes a lot of commitment um, from our uh, perspective. But look, if you're looking to progress your students and you're really looking to help them, it, it's, a, it's a great way to go. Um, and they really are learning. I can see the development from the students um, already. It's been fantastic. And the people who are engaging with it, you can see mm -hmm. the level is progressing at a rapid rate. They're getting that yeah. individual personal feedback. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think that's huge. It's that what we're really struggling with over the last while is a personal connection. It's a feeling that, you know, that the person that you're watching on the telly that you don't get to talk to actually is, you know, your coach, your instructor. It's someone that you have a relationship with and who cares about your progression. And I mean, you know, for us now, it's about using the technology as best we can to get there. Um, one of the things that we've done as well is we've had to look at the theory quiz side of things or the, you know, the theory and terminology and, the, you know, assessing some understanding of it. So not just in their ability to demonstrate, but in their ability to verbalize and, you know, and describe it. Now, we already spoke about the culture technique, um, but one of the things we've also got is the ability to ask them to identify faults, you know, and correct and incorrect performance. So this one. Um, I have great comments on the YouTube versions of this telling me what I'm doing wrong, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, but we performed the kick several times, with some with very obvious errors and some with uh, less obvious errors for the, the students to work their way through. And so when they come to their quiz, they can kind of say, look, this performance was correct, this one was incorrect because, uh, and again, it's something that we can give feedback on. And watching someone else looking for errors is a great way of strengthening your own understanding of a particular technique. And that's something that we use the whole time in person, in training, but we don't have the time to do that for every student. You yeah, can and, pick and, out one or two students. And it's, it's improving our way of coaching and our way of communication as well, because mm -hmm. for me at the start, I was very eager to help the students as best I can and give them every single piece of information that they can improve on. But then I realized, okay, maybe this is a little bit overwhelming. 
and I kind of resorted back to my um, primary school teaching degree and the whole idea of two stars and a wish. So to really focus on the things that are going well um, and maybe to just give one or two things to really focus on that will make a big difference. Um, so that's what I've been doing as of the last few days is to kind of really help people that will help their performance overall. Um, so it, it improves your way of coaching and your almost your analytical eye to keep an eye on certain things um, and to have that the, the, the comparison as well. You need to be careful there that you're not kind of like, like here's a whatever a fifth degree six degree black belt comparing themselves to to younger kids who are yellow and green belts in a video so you got to be careful of the comparisons as well and you, you always have to continue um praising the students and, and keeping their spirits high making sure mm. that they don't get disheartened you know so there, there's a lot of balance there as well in in this um in this kind of way of coaching i guess because it, it is different yeah and and i suppose that actually leads me very nicely into this whole this uh a difference between formative assessment and summative assessment that you know in mm. terms of our gradings our gradings traditionally are uh tra you know like a summative assessment it's you do your work unrelated to it then you arrive at the test you show what you've got you get your grade and you're done it's it's all or nothing at the end and it's very much like our traditional school exams with your you know summer exam your your junior leaving cert where what we're looking at with a portfolio of work is much more like what you might have done in university around a dissertation to where, uh, you know, the student comes forward and says, look, I've got this much and you give them feedback and some of it is good enough to go into the final copy and some of it isn't. And they go and work on the other stuff and they come back and they say, OK, well, I fixed that and here's a bit more. And and that's kind of what we're doing. We're taking a much longer term view to the grading. So the grading isn't going to be done in a day. It's going to take six weeks and maybe someone mm. does it in a week but for most people it's going to take days and days and days of like you know you work on something you bring it back you submit four or five videos and three of them are great and two of them need work and then they give you five videos and one of the two is is good now one still needs work but what they're seeing is if they need to get 35 things correct you know in order to go into the next grade they're well the first time they submit a few videos well okay now i've got three of my 35 I've got two to improve and then they give you another five and you're like, okay, now I've got six of it and they can see their progress bar kind of ticking along, you know, mm. getting towards that final grade and you're never giving them a, you know, that like stop, you're done, you fail. You're giving them the, that technique wasn't up to, you know, that technique needs to be better. It needs to be better in this way because come back to me in a few days or next week or whatever and keep working on the other things and what that really allows us to do is to you know step by step by step encourage build develop and look at the grading as something that's a long-term prog progressional thing for now rather than a, a one-off downside there are a lot of things we can't assess this way so mm -hmm. you know yeah like contact is severely hampered obviously and um, partners all of that stuff so it really, we are really, really focusing on the physical aspects in terms of kicking, uh, leg strength, flexibility, things like that. Technical aspects, so technical hand techniques, technical kicking, um, patterns, of course, um, and theory. That's that's literally all we can do as of now. You can yeah. maybe have a look at some other aspects, but really that's where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck. And I think that's a good thing because yeah. by... By focusing in on that for a period of time, it's going to only develop your students much better in that technical approach. And of course, once we get back to like regular training, if if it ever comes around again, of course they're going to be excited to get back to work with their partners and back to work with sparring and things like that. So these things will naturally increase and develop um, over time once we can get back again. So it's just using the the moment that we have at its full advantage and kind of the, the silver lining approach to all of this to, to really focus in on, and get the, the best out of what we can of this situation. Yeah. And, and it, I think it's worth a chat there that, you know, normally speaking, we're having to compromise an awful lot in terms of our time allocation. So we have tournaments going on. So we're training and preparing for a competition where you're going to do pattern sparring, maybe special technique in our case, right? Um, you're then going to have a tournament season kind of ending and there's a four or six week period where it's like oh okay now we have to scramble and get ready for the grading you do all of the things you haven't trained for ages and it's you know you're it's a little bit like the the, uh, the coaching adage of like uh peaking for sunday 
you know, you're, yeah. you know, it's kind of very, very short term. How much can I squeeze in in this little piece of time? And now, well, we can't, they, they can't spar. We're not going to, most kids aren't going to have breaking boards at home and people to hold them for them. So, and there was a question early on about, do we do bone conditioning? And the answer for that, you know, I suppose just to, to quickly get back to that very first question is, generally speaking, no. Uh, but in our senior class, do we do conditioning in general? Do we do, you know, some uh, t- conditioning of the tools? Yes, but limited. Um, and so, of course, far less effective than really dedicating some focus to it. But that's a thing that we're not going to focus on for right now. We can improve the technique that might go into it, but we're not going to focus on breaking. It's not something we can work on or special technique or self-defense or sparring. Uh, So because we can't focus on them right now, we can focus on the physical development, the flexibility, the strength. We can focus on the technical execution of the fundamental movements and patterns. We can do, uh, you know, even one-sided pre-arranged sparring if we want, you know. So uh, we're not going to, in this grade, focus on it over much but it is something that we could do. And by having that singular focus or that more like more focused approach for now, I think we can get a bit deeper, you know? And I think we can, yeah. uh, we can look for people to improve more than we might otherwise look for, uh, you know, just because they have the time, they have the focus, there, there aren't other disciplines or areas within the martial arts that are going to be assessed this time. So we can go a little deeper. Mm, yeah, exactly. And and sometimes, as you said, we don't have that opportunity usually. Um, so it's a great opportunity to do so. Um, so we got a, a shout out there from Lawrence. Good morning, Lawrence from Canada. Mm-hmm. And also from Roy. Thanks for the awesome channel, guys. Roy. So yeah, Roy, just a reminder there actually has come up with a great system um, for belt checking. So tkdchecker.com. So check that out. It's a nice little system. They use it in jiu-jitsu at the moment for um, almost giving people some... Um, just a bit bit of um, structure behind the belts and where you're coming from and lineage and things like that. So check that out. Really cool. Roy has uh, sent us on uh, an example of that page. So check that out as well. Really cool Super. to check that out. Um, yeah, so I think a particular area and technical is one of those areas. So we've seen that in even our kind of our live sessions here that we have on a Tuesday with sparring. It's kind of more of expanding the brain of sparring um, and expanding the technical aspects, which is something that usually it's more focused on the, the the technical side of Taekwondo. We always speak about the different forms of learning that we have with the boat, um, and they're a little bit different of how you mm. approach yeah. learning for those. Um, so now was a great opportunity to really focus in on that technical approach. And one of the things that I'd like to come back to as well is with this, I mean, we have 30% of the people who are saying, no, they don't want to do a grading online. And there's going to be good reasons for that. So yeah. if we kind of postulate based on our own experiences, about why don't we want to do it? There's a, there's a few reasons. And, you know, for me, the things that you lack when you don't do the grading in person, or at least, you know, as a, a final end statement uh, uh, grading event is you don't recreate that pressure and the emotional stress and the uh, the high tension of a grading. And, you know, that's actually part of it. That's part of why we do it. So that's a disadvantage mm. that we definitely have. Um, but there's another thing that for me goes with those gradings in person, which is strict time limits because the next group has to arrive or whatever, so that the day can continue in a, in a progressive way and we can be responsible with parents and families and taking people's time and so on. And what that means is I might look for six repetitions of a technique and I might be watching six, eight people, or I might be watching two people, it doesn't really matter, but I'm seeing six or eight repetitions and some of them will be better than others and you know all of that kind of thing. And there's no opportunity for feedback, you simply mark what you see and that's the result that the person's going to get at the end. But we have an opportunity now to send it back and insist on it being correct before we have a person advance. And that creates a very interesting change in philosophy because gradings are very much designed like a a, a traditional academic exam would have been, where you have, how would you say, uh, you have a pass grade. You must get 40% or in our case, maybe it's higher, but you you have to have a particular grade Oh, I've lost Richie, but I'm sure he'll be back. You have to have a particular grade in order to pass. And what that does for us is it allows for a certain level of um, uh, people just hitting the minimum. 
you know, the pass equals MD. So you're hitting the minimum. And what we can change when we do it this way is we can say, well, there's no particular time limit. You will get there when you get there, but we can insist on a higher level of performance across this more limited frame. And I think that's really an exciting place to be um, when, you know, we can really look at things in detail and give people time to get it right. So we have a question coming in from Lawrence again from Canada. How do you manage teaching many different levels in the same online session? Do you spend time looking at each screen? So that's a really, really good question. And it kind of leads into this as well as to how the gradings might be challenging. So in answer to Lawrence's question there, while I'm waiting for Richie to come back in, I know what I do is I do split up my Zoom classes by grade and by age. And there's uh, there's no more than I think three grades typically. Um, uh, so we have white belts and uh, kind of yellow tags in uh, in one group, the younger ones in particular. We have a slightly older group of white belts, yellow tags, yellow belts, that kind of thing. We have um, uh, a number of people uh, then who would be in green belts, blue tags, and then we have blue belts, red belts together. So the black belts are training in with the red belts, actually. And yeah, when you have that, the focus has to be really on those technical progressions, the kicking. Um, welcome back, Richie. Uh, apologies, internet dropped. Yeah. So. I was just answering Lawrence's question there about managing different levels in the same online session and just the, the, the essence of that saying, look, in the end, I separate as much as I can. I have four different online or online groups and uh, and in the end, uh, this actually might be a very nice way to help to be a bit more specific to each of the groups in terms of their needs. Um, so that would be good to do. Um, we yeah. also have a question, uh, Sligok Films, which uh, one of our Sligo folks, uh, for those not familiar with the Irish language, um, but uh, he did his black belt prelim online, found it much more stressful than the real thing is it was just me that the examiner was looking at, not much room for mistakes. Yeah, now that does sound challenging. I don't think I'd fancy grading all of my students one by one um, uh, and getting them to perform that mm. way. I, I can certainly appreciate the stress that might go with that. Um, now, just please imagine that uh, for me, I was due to do my prelim last uh, uh, May, June, going for a seventh. And the way we do a prelim for that, it would be me in front of a panel of all of the seven threes and higher. So uh, one to one is bad. One to 10 or 12 might be more interesting. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I'd much rather be doing it. So uh, I'm glad you've got that done. Hope it went well for you. And uh, I'm sure that was Mr. Doherty doing the, uh, the prelim there. Um, uh, but hopefully we can actually get a black belt grading for you to take part in very soon. That would be wonderful. Um, but yeah, we, we were just making the point around the um, uh, the fact that you normal gradings are, you know, there is a pass level. A certain amount of getting things wrong is acceptable. Um, and with this kind of approach, you can be a little bit tighter and send things back. And you don't have to say no to the person overall. You only have to say no to the discrete elements of the grading. And when the person is finally able to demonstrate all of the discrete elements of the grading, they might be in a better place, at least in the areas that you're testing, than someone who presented on the day for an average grading, we'll say. Yeah, because they're getting that individual feedback, of course, and it's over a long period of time. Um, so it's like the whole idea of continuous assessment. It's yeah. like you're, you're developing all of your skills continuously and you're just building one on the other and um, getting that foundation and building above a tiered approach. And it's very, very important to be able to do that because usually in a, in a big group, we, we, you're not able to give that same attention, kind of like what Lawrence mentioned earlier, individual students. So this is an opportunity to really take that step back, give the individual feedback to people to help them push forwards. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things then that I think we haven't really touched on out of this whole thing is um, about how it changes the learner. Because the person who comes to take Wanda class to learn, usually we, we almost save them as an advert. Like, all you got to do is walk in that door, we take care of the rest. And it's very true, like when it comes mm. to a normal class, you're mm. giving all of the instruction, the input, do this now, do this next. This is how I want to see it performed. And then we, we like to, um, uh, you know, we do like to in, encourage them to think for themselves and problem solve. But this is another uh, you know, step in that direction. It's like, well, there's information. We're, we're guiding you through the information to a degree, but you're taking responsibility for the where, when, and how of your learning. 
And, you know, if you need to go and look at a different video, if you need to follow the links on YouTube and find another one to help it make sense to you, if you need to send in your, your, uh, your, your effort, get feedback and start a dialogue over and back about how to improve what you're showing. Well, that's changing the learner. That's, that's making a person more independent, you know, as a learner. And I think that's huge as a, a potential outcome. Yeah. And I guess as well, one of the best things about this is that, um, and we have the ability to, you know, some people are a little bit more visual, so you can help with the videos. Mm. Some people, they prefer to kind of have that time to sit down and analyze it a bit differently. And um, so we do have the opportunity to, to provide different ways of helping people, which is a good opportunity here as well. Yeah. For sure. We've uh, just comment in from Roy. Um, so we'll pop that one up there. Uh, so... This is just around the idea of uh, exchanging classes online and Hong Louis and Stephen Ryan have certainly done that. And, you know, I think they've enjoyed it just for the, uh, you can have a certain amount of tunnel vision teaching all of your your own Zoom classes. And, you know, as a uh, an aside to that, one of the things that I do and uh, I would say, and Richie is a little bit different, you can talk about your experience, but uh, I have Mr. Jamie Williams with me for all of my Zoom classes, uh, but, we alternate. So I deliver half of them and he acts as the producer and commentator uh, for when I'm on the floor delivering and then we swap roles. So I'll be on the, or sorry, I'll be the producer and uh, provide the commentary and feedback and he'll be on the floor delivering the sessions. And mentally, it's a huge break to be able to do that. Yours is a little different with, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have your own producer. Yeah, so luckily for me, uh, my sister Sarah is actually a black belt as well. So she's helping out on the producing side of things with me. So obviously, we live in the same household. So we're able to go to the gym together and to do the Zoom sessions. So that is being able to work away, explain the techniques, give examples. And she's able to be there, give feedback and maybe help out things if like the the audio needs to be adjusted and things like that if we're having problems like we're having right now today with the internet you know these things are real problems yeah. that happen within the within the current time so we have extra people working at home the internet is getting bogged down all these mad things that happen now that we probably weren't used to so it, it's good to be able to have that back in as well and to be able to adjust on the fly yeah so i suppose as we get into our last kind of uh, discussion topics if anyone has any um we say challenges, concerns, or ideas that they have and they want to throw it into the comments now would be a great time to do that before we finish up. Mm. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, so from Connor, we'll just get to that one. Uh, I think that's kind of one of my own students, actually. Ah, there you go. So this is for direct feedback. Uh, I think the virtual class is good because it's one to one, but rather sparring in person with someone else. Uh, we hear you. Uh, we hear you. We miss hitting people too. Uh, mm -hmm. as uh, Jamie, my assistant instructor, said, like he, he actually misses getting hit more, um, <laughs> you know, which is a, a strange one, but yeah, it's uh, I, I get where he's coming from. Any physical contact at this stage would be lovely, um, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so for me, the last thing I wanted to talk about on this was just the um, the actual reward to the instructor of making the investment in time and effort to put this together. Um, because for me uh, and Richie, I think in, in, in putting this together, you've had to kind of go back to zero, look at every single grade, everything that you ask of your students at every single grade, um, figure out what you can do in this format and how you're going to explain it and put it across. And it's for me anyway, has put, you, you know, there's a, uh, I think there's a book coming out uh, shortly about it as well. Uh, but the beginner mindset and how to get into the beginner mindset and keep in that frame. And I, I think for me, this has been another experience of doing that. And one of the things you do to do that is go and learn something new and using the Google Classroom platform to do this has been something new. Uh, but we get to keep it, you know, when it's done, it's done. So after this, yeah. we have, you know, a resource that our students can have forever. Like we never have to teach exclusively in person again. So we can teach mm -hmm. in person and supplement that with a resource that a person can engage with forever. So, you know, we can send a resource to our students say, hey, listen, yeah, rather than with say only having, you know, we have our training manual, we have, you know, all of the stuff explained in print. But now what about our, you know, our different learning types? You know, what about people who are challenged with that in print medium, you know, who want to hear it, see it, engage with it in different ways? 
And if we were doing this under normal circumstances, there'd be no impetus maybe to, to do all of this work. But now because we need it and it's urgent, it's happened. And uh, we have a, a resource that's going to be there for years to come for all of our students. Mm, and even to add to that, it's been fantastic as well. It, recording yourself is a great way to check your own level and check like it's very simple things that mm. I've actually noticed that, for example, my middle punches because of my Zoom classes and um, my camera is way lower down based on the setting that we have. And I'm, yeah. I'm noticing that my punches are actually after dropping slightly <laughs> to adjust for the, for the angles on the camera. So it's been yeah. funny to actually see it back on a regular video and say, whoa, we've got to check that in line pretty quick. And um, because you can easily pick up some bad habits uh, unintentionally there based on the, the angles and stuff you have your Zoom classes at. So it's good yeah. to be able to kind of almost have a self check there as well. Um, Lawrence asking there just with space restrictions and home individual training, any tips for pattern training? So we've both been doing this recently, actually. Um, so do you want to start off on that one, Richie? And I'll give my experiences as well. Yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're having on one evening we have from white belt up to one year and then on the alternate week it's from yulgok so we have blue tag up to black belt patterns so we're alternating them each week and what we're doing is basically um using the online classroom to really give people the learning and for where they can get the steps get the techniques and it's almost like a follow along and i just kind of give added tips as we go so it's not really like um a one-to-one -one session really when we get to the higher grades and the numbers reduce um, a lot, then I can give that feedback a little bit more. When you have the bigger groups, it's not possible. It's quite difficult as well for the younger kids and the lower grades. They don't have yeah. that foundation yet to know 180 degree turns, 90 degree turns, things like that. And then, of course, you got flipped um, screen sometimes as well. You got the mirror image on screens, which messes things up. So what we've done is I have one uh, camera, the laptop I'm using right now, my own laptop at the front. And then I have my sister's laptop at the back of the room to show a rear view. So that kind of helps a little bit for some people. And we're able to spotlight both of those um, camera views on Zoom. So both of them pop up to the top of the screen, which allows students a little bit um, of help with the patterns. But if there's going to be, you have to expect a lot of like uh, double stepping and things like that because we have small spaces. It's more of just doing what we can right now. Uh, it's not going to be perfect pattern, not the best performance mm. you've ever had. More, more slightly look we're training we're trying to improve and we're doing the best we can to not leave and um, the current circumstances put us to a halt yeah and i suppose for me what i've done is i've kind of taken back to the essence of right okay what is the point of the pattern um you know in terms of the you know for us training it and improving your performance of it yes it would be ideal if we could complete the pattern from start to finish in its designated pattern or you know our, our formation um and that would be ideal and we'd love that. But most people's like living room, kitchen, you know, that you have kids moving rooms in the house, depending on the, the day of the week and who's available and all the rest of it, you know, and that's not viable. So mm. what I've been focusing on, I suppose, particularly is um, the sequences, the chunks of the patterns and teaching those almost, you know, sequentially or in isolation, giving rhythmic challenges, giving, uh, you know, increasing the number of repetitions and I think it's actually getting a better understanding of the pattern in a way because you know previously you might try to you know you, you understand the fundamental movements that make up the pattern now we try to learn the, the the format of the pattern the full sequence of movements from start to finish and then we'll try to refine and improve where this intermediate step that we're stuck at sometimes does mean that you can improve the rhythm and the performance of all of the individual segments of the pattern and yes, they need to be stuck together. And we're probably going to have to play catch up with that when we get a chance, but it's yeah. not bad. And at least we can focus on the delivery of the technique. We can deliver, you know, focus on the rhythm between techniques or between segments um, and keep looking at it that way and challenging people to find their own challenging segments. Um, there's an, a question asked and answered here as well. Uh, so Robert Nolan asked, can an outdoor or open air grading be a viable option? And uh, Roy, they managed it in Norway uh, before the summer grading in 2020. And I think that would be absolutely something we'll look at towards the summer grading. So we're hoping to do this online grading that we're working at right now um, by mm -hmm. end of March. So uh, typically this neck of the woods, traditionally it pours for St. Patrick's. Day, That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So it traditionally pours. Um, you're not likely to get on where, where I live in the country. Richie is in the sunny air south, which means you get about two more days of sunshine. <laughs> not in the by year. much. 
yeah about two days of sunshine in the year i reckon is about the difference um but we're go- like wh- where i am you know i i couldn't guarantee on any weekend day any time in the year that you're like summer winter it doesn't matter that it's not going to rain from one end of the day to the next not that that's a strict limiter but it does mean that the surface you pick has to be appropriate and not get dangerous when it rains you know the few things like that but it's it's definitely mm-hmm. something we could look at but right now we can't even meet outdoors so we need the the general conditions to improve a long way before we can consider an outdoor grading. Um, so hopefully we can do something like that by the time we get into the summer one. If we can't do an indoor grading, an outdoor grading might be an option. This really is a solution for right now. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. It's, just, it's literally just dealing with what we have in front of us and not leaving things stop us to keep going forwards. You know, so, um, yeah, um, Connor is actually a black tag student of mine here. And, and this mm-hmm. question might be good for you, Adrian. And um, will black belts get online gradings at some stage? Yeah. And like, this is something that has been discussed at every meeting since give or take May, June of last year. And it has been uh, mooted or it has been put out as a possibility that we would do an online black belt grading, but we've held off on it. Our goal really would be the um, that we would have, if we need to, a more regionalized grading, if we need to do that, um, depending on travel restrictions. But the way things have been set up in Ireland, uh, we really can't do anything like a grading until we get to either a very eased level three or more likely a level two, uh, which would then allow people to travel between counties, would allow for the number of people we need to be in the same space at the same time, etc. So we don't see a grading happening in that uh, format until we get to level two. Um, if it continues and continues and continues, of course, we may have to look at doing something else. But we, the ITF has also got... Uh, restrictions around the black belt grading uh online and we uh we don't intend to uh, at the moment to do that you know so uh for the moment the the semi-official answer is no we don't intend to do that um and are there any online competitions coming up organized by the ita no is the answer to that one as well um they are being organized on a more international level and people have had the opportunity to take part, for example, in the online patterns competition that was run by the ITF there uh, uh, late last year uh, from blue belts and higher, I think that was. Um, And there will be other things that come up uh, along those lines, but no, the ITA isn't necessarily thinking of organizing online uh, competitions just yet. Again, it's something we may have to look at uh, and it's something we have access to technology for, but to have the people to umpire and to meet the timelines and all the rest of it, it was, um, uh, I know Miss Rachel Kennedy from my club was involved in umpiring the uh, ITF online pattern championships, and it was challenging uh, to get it all done and to, to make it work. Um, we could do something along those lines, but at the moment, that's not the priority. Our priority is really focused around uh, supporting people getting back to training. So we'll see how mm-hmm. we go. Absolutely. All right. So we make that it for today. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, we covered a lot, and I think um, it's a good way to kind of almost mix it up as well and um, based on the current climate that we have. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's episode. A bit of a, a change up then from the regular one we'll be back again next tuesday with our live session so we'll have something um nice and fresh there again hopefully for people to 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 work with and again it's all about just rolling with the the punches as they say pardon the pun and just dealing with the times that we have at the moment and trying to push forward ever much so yeah so thanks for tuning in as always everybody um hope you enjoyed it and we see you in the next one see you tuesday